Okay, I just finished this little beauty and uh, I think it became quite nice actually. I think I'm really getting back into it. Look at these colors. So vivid, so nice. And I got this to become really 3D. And yeah, uh, the colors are a little bit more warmer than uh, in reality. But yeah, worked a lot with the textures and stuff. So yeah, hope you enjoy it. Here is the onion I painted. Has been starting to fall apart, so it's good that I actually managed to do it for once within the frame of it not dying. And uh, yeah, as usual, I hope you will give the thumbs up, leave a comment, share it on social media, and um, uh, yeah, and check out my Patreon. You can actually win a painting like this every month if you. Join it for five dollars, and if you only want to uh, support my channel, you can give a dollar or whatever you want. So that would be nice. It's uh, yeah. It's also nice that you watch all my videos and keep them going. So with this, until next time, I wish you a fine farewell and have a joyful video painting lesson. Okay, uh, another day, another strange looking onion. Uh, this is actually just going to be a small painting. And it is actually, I started on an onion a long time ago, which died. And I, yeah, I uh, just, yeah, let it hang. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to paint this onion on this so it's like restarting the whole thing and it might be interesting for you to see how I paint over it and um, use what I already painted as a backdrop for for the new one which is this so with this stay cool and watch me paint okay so here we go uh, yeah I prefer, actually I don't know if I need my glasses, but it's hard to tell. Anyway, uh, so I'm also going to make it smaller because the thing that grows is so huge. So just one, two, and it will go all over the place. also like the shadows that it throws, so try to get these in, them, them in. I'm going to make this a small onion. Just going to place the, bring it down, I think I want to do it down here. Uh, it's, it's a good and a bad thing that is already, already uh, uh, paint on it. Now I just have to kind of make a choice here. I think I'm gonna go down all the way here because there's a so it's like this. Maybe I should start with the shadows actually. I can just do all the shadows. Like this, and uh, of course, now much of um, I do prefer to start on a fresh canvas, okay, because it is um, like a totally new beginning. But this is like a gazelle without gazelle, gazelle. So I'm just going to, um, it's almost like my brain has a problem 
when there is a motif there, uh, my brain tends to want to. I, I've noticed this before because I had some uh, portraits I painted over and restarted, and I kind of had to turn the whole canvas upside down because there was something in me refusing to paint over stuff and refusing actually to see the new things. So, well, actually, this has to be further down. Just gonna, it's going to be a mess for a while. Sorry about that. I did some mistakes here. But <clears throat> it's easily corrected. So, yeah. Also, want to try to keep this video short, to the point. Now, ranting about life, existence, and everything. Just paint, 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 and get it done uh, very quickly, hopefully. Sometimes I should actually give myself some room to just have it a little bit sketchy, you know, just let it... I used to do that actually when I was um, uh, a few years ago. I was very inspired by sick child of that monk and these things and I try to dissolve things more and uh, but in a way uh, it was kind of getting better and better doing tricks I felt and uh, I want it to be a little bit more clear and, uh, and rational a rational person and I like rational paintings um, but also emotional paintings so there has to be a very nice balance between rationality skill and virtuosi virtuosis you know music music uh, and not mystic but music, <laughs> it's very important. Um, I don't care about the mysticism. Anyway. <clears throat> so, I painted this, I used these uh, backgrounds so many times before. Actually. Oops. Uh, uh, I, it's kind of my favorite objects to paint because they have so much uh, life in them and uh, this old wooden stuff you know, you find your favorite stuff and you stick with it in a way see yeah, it's starting to get positive it's, it's good side, oh, it's good side. You see, uh, now the paint, when you start on a new one, uh, you have um, the paint will be kind of sucked into the canvas and you get kind of a delicious, uh, fresh beginning. Uh, so, which is a little bit easier. But, you know, it's going to be interesting. You see now that, the, and it, it, these paintings have now been hanging on a wall, these sketches, for several, it must be at least two years. I didn't do anything with them. And strange, you shouldn't do that. You know, because I've been, I've been painting a lot of still lives, uh, then also, I didn't really know what to do with it. I'm not going to paint all totally over it, just paint something totally new, and not an onion. And I just uh, argued with myself about that. That might be one of the reasons that I didn't um, do anything about them. 
Alright. It's harder for me to... It is more difficult. As you can see, I'm fumbling more. Because I have to... But, you know... Just have to keep fumbling until it's good. I use some small palettes now for a while, and I it's very good for extreme detail in the end. If you are doing small faces or something, to have a very small palette. But I do. In general, I prefer a palette that is like this, uh, and yeah, you see, it comes up like this, and this one comes all the way here, and this one comes, and there's one up there, this one goes, and the problem here is that it will change very fast. So, I don't have that many, much time to get it right. You know, I've been, these onions been in the fridge for a while and actually growing in the fridge. And when you take them out, they start to explode, they really start to grow. Light and dark, light and dark. That's so dull thing for me. Light and dark. Mm -hmm. I could have used the same background, but I think it was too orange up here, so I just wanted to change that all together and it's probably the best thing I can do so I don't get um, confused with it. yeah so we get a fresh fresh start this will not be a seven hour video I'm just gonna do a rough Condition here. I'm going to turn off the camera. I'm going to paint for a while and then put it back on and do like five or ten minute segments all about painting. I think it's another not of long. Actually, I do wonder if I'm going to make some. Uh, some um, I'm, going, I'm going to make some huge figure paintings soon and I do wonder if I'm going to make really really long videos but then make videos that kind of touches all things in painting in every video from the grounding everything uh, that is I don't know if that is smart to, to show you the, the grounding not maybe do one of that because you know it's the same things every time and people know it get tired of it but also uh, it is really important to 
to um, if I'm if I'm gonna build out a figure painting, I can plan it in the grounding. I can plan it like I shown before. Um, and we kind of build some of the textures in the backgrounds and some uh, yeah uh, yeah I think I want to do that actually show you how we can I know Rembrandt did that uh, I heard that much uh, and they also did a gazelle and so in a way you can start from the grounding and you know and plan the whole thing might be a good idea to show that. Uh, maybe do more big paintings where I mostly focus on close ups because I know that some people have missed close ups. I call it a, of course. But that is in, there is a lot of close-ups in it, so where and how I make the, make cloth and make wall and everything. And maybe I should make one where I stream. And most of the process in different episodes. But anyway, let's see. Let's see what happens. I wonder how, what is the longest videos we can actually post on Facebook? People, some people like to watch stuff like that. I know some people even think it's nice to have my videos on when I paint and hear me talk about painting and life and stuff and that is really amazing because you kind of reach a kind of kind of kind of kind of and kind of kind of blah 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 you reach a audience on a different level and uh, yeah you know being a thinking Thinking open person, self-critical, is also something that I hope that people can take away from it. That one doesn't become a pretentious prick like many artists actually do. So, yeah. Shadows are quite fun. It's funny how I can't really get over that how happy I feel when I paint. It's stunning. And how miserable I feel when I don't get to paint and I kind of overwhelm my brain with nonsense and distractions going to this depression like I was listening to the news today too much and uh, in the end I just felt nauseated by all this chatter Trump 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 this and Trump that and Trump that la 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 you know everything has its limits and uh, 
you know, kind of swamping your brain in negativity. And painting, painting is so positive. It, it, you engage with yourself on this deeper level and it lifts you up and make you feel like life actually matters. So beautiful. So, even if you just have it as a hobby, just paint. Just have, have it as a good way to connect with your deeper levels. Um, it's creativity that makes us human. And when humans can't do that, they really get depressed. Um, they start watching too much sports and porn and stupid entertainment and trying to drown out yourself. You don't want to think, you don't want to engage with yourself. I've been a master of that actually, or is and have been, so try to avoid that and try to uh, connect with yourself. So that is my advice, which I give in every video. You never know, maybe somebody who never saw my videos pops in and see them. And, uh, and I can actually repeat myself with a good conscience. <laughs> I mean, life is repetition anyway, and uh, so is painting, you know, you, rep you do the same things in some form or another all the time, you can try and go on a vacation and blah 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 and do stuff, but in the end, you have to come back to normality and doing things that that's normal and uh, normal life is it's very normal <laughs> and that's a double conclusion obvious anyway you see me here I have anyway from the basics of it in and I'm gonna turn off the camera work for a while probably one hour or something and then I will put the camera back on and see where I am mm -hmm. yeah that was 20 minutes 20 minutes mm -hmm. Here we are. Uh huh. Uh, actually, I will let this probably grow out of the picture because if not, uh, I have to paint the onion so small that it's not really any fun. So yeah, it's quite a small painting. So I will let that happen. Uh huh. So now I know. The sketch has become better. I have been going back and forth, and it is now a little bit limited to much how much I can put on it so I will soon just let it dry and uh, I'm actually going to paint on two more this evening which is the same thing I had three paintings that I started on as small canvases and hanging on the wall and annoying me for such a long time. I need some more orange color. <coughs> I use uh, some uh, orange colors and uh, I use like um, 
not orange. Well, I also use cadmium orange, but it's, it's more. I like to have these. The more. If I'm gonna. If I'm going to have a good rhythm in paint the painting, I don't want to have to mix every single color all the time because that would become very stressful so it's nice to have different I have three different um, red I have uh, cadmium red I have vermilion and alizarine then I have at least three of the yellows here I, right now I have four Actually, I only need three, uh, but it depends. And of course, what you use the most of on your palette is up to what colors that are actually in the painting. And you can basically foresee that a little bit, so you don't waste too much paint. Uh, you don't really need to put on a lot of... Uh, say uh, Prussian blue if the painting you are doing is mostly like orange in orange tones like this but if you have a um, painting that is more uh, like lighter more light in it more white and stuff it can be good to use more of these colors so anyway I have every color on my palette all the time it's like uh, maybe it's easier that way because I do mix all of them all the time and if one of them is not there it would feel probably as you would if you were a pianist, you would like a tangent, which is called in Norway, or keyboard, or whatever they call the things on the, on the piano. A friend who plays the piano, so I might ask him what is called in English. English. Yeah. See now I cannot paint in these directions. And yeah, it is changing a little bit even now when I'm painting it. Now this has grown more up there and stuff. So, but at some point you just have to. And I'll choose, okay, I choose uh, that it's going to be there, and then I just stick with it. So, because keeping, even if they fall down, I just kind of stick with what I did and uh, uh, use the colors. To just paint the rest of them. It's also one that goes out here. It goes like it's more in the dark. It goes in there. I see the little bit of that. Yeah. And some of that light here. And this. The roots.
Okay, next time the, the shadow spirit will become more uh, stronger and So here this that one around this one is like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was a sketch. For now I'm gonna try to do shorter bursts, only explain what I do, and instead of instead of um, yeah making it so long, I will try to do more clips but shorter ones. A little bit more often so you see more of the change and stuff. Yeah. So this is okay now. Doing this, some texture. Okay. I think that's fine. That was a half hour. Basically a half hour, 22, 20, 29 minutes actually. Yeah, see you like this. Okay. See. Okay, here we are. I'm going to put some glaze on here to get the colors out. Not glaze, I mean retouche funnies. Um, then I will, as usual, wait about 10 minutes and I will put my glaze with uh, the Kaplak and the French Ultramarine, which I usually use to turn it. So, yeah, you can see how the colors are popping out again. Now the onion are kind of changing a lot, but I will stick to what I did. So I'm trying to also took a photo of it. So if I if it just totally falls apart, I can have a photo as a, re as a reference for where the leaves were and stuff. So yeah. We are the lazure, the lazur, lazur. Uh, yeah. Let me see. I do as usual. The crab black and the blue. So just just to get some life into it. Just to get it to. On it. I don't need much. It's so dark anyway. So. Of course, the thing has changed. As I did say, that's also another problem. Well, that's good. I just need to change my palette. Sizes. I will start with a, with a light area there, as usual. I'll build light first, and then texture. Um, I think it's quite sweet actually, this 
Oh, I like some other colors too. There should have been more. I find it easier to have different yellows ready. See, just um, start here. With that very strong light, and yeah, and just keep pointing. Just gonna do that a little bit like this. What I like with putting some uh, light on them is the fact that I get this uh, very. Uh, I do get a um, warm, very warm color. I think I really enjoy. But sometimes I think it becomes a little bit too warm and uh, that is not necessarily a good thing. So one has to be careful not to go too far because it becomes kind of a little bit kitschy. Like it seems too, too romantic or now you could all say, you know, actually making paintings like this is very romantic in the first place. So <coughs> There's no real, I guess there's no, you don't know why, it's just, why not? I think I should make a big think video, why do I paint? And What's actually, time is so scarce, you know. So it's a problem. Time. As an aging, aging researcher, Dave, I think his name is David, something he's doing, I don't know research into the biology of aging and you know, I actually you know, now evolving medicines against it and uh, hopefully I will get to take part in that so that I can actually buy more basically buying these medicines will be like buying yourself time and existence. I mean, existence is the only thing that matters, so. Okay. 
we'll see. He has actually come quite far with uh, experimenting in mice and stuff. And mice and human beings aren't that different. So what I would like to happen is that I get at least uh, lead a healthy life into old age. So I can actually be very productive. So that's my goal. That's also why I lead a very healthy life. Now I exercise and I eat right. I do everything because I want to. Not necessarily prolong my lifespan that much, but prolong my living span. You know, who want to sit in an old age pensioner's home and listen to some dude or woman who can't really play the piano, sing long songs and stuff like that. I'm gonna rather die. So anyway, back to painting. I should stop with the digressions. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I will stick with the first sketch as far as possible, despite this thing changing a little bit. Um, because if I'm gonna be able to finish it in time, I can't do keep on changing things like crazy. That is not on the table now at all. Of the that Prussian blue. It's kind of a life savior. It's funny I couldn't I couldn't understand how to use that color in the beginning. It was so strong that it was impossible for me to handle it. It's almost like you, you get it on your clothes or get it on something in your skin, you can't really get it off. It's like, it's crazy strong. So, just gonna enhance the light around it a little bit. Um, see if we can find the right color.
nice spaces. It's too way too white, but it's kind of a start. Then I tone it down, as you can see, and I give it more and more texture, and also here. This one is very green, so it will stick out anyway. So, here, but like this. The good thing is that now it's quite sticky. It's almost some like somebody you know, because of the, the glaze and the retouche finish, it's almost like somebody just pulls the paint into the painting. And uh, it gives me these nice, transparent, strangely nice brush strokes and stuff. So, yeah, I really, I really like that. Really, really, really. Okay, anyway, I'm falling out here because I'm concentrating so much. So it was 60 minutes, and uh, see you later, alligator. Yay! Been working for a while, and uh, this kind of taking shape. But I see that <coughs> there is work to do. No doubt about that. Um, yeah. Try to only do 10 minutes. <clears throat> minutes. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do from now on. Try to, you know, when I sketch a painting like this, it's going to be nice to have the whole sketching process. Um, 
will in it. But <coughs> when you're going to continue painting, it takes such a sorry, <coughs> it takes such a long time to do details and stuff. Fast. It's just kind of useless, really. <coughs> Try to. Get the whole process in. Anyway, you see, Nice when I show up. <laughs> oh, I don't talk so much. You can hear the, uh, the sound of my brushwork. It's quite nice. So liberating to be pain free. It's almost almost weird in a way.
Just give me some more medium. Maybe I should try to start using some lectures and stuff in the background again um, when I paint. I'll vary between that and and be talking about stuff. That could be a good idea. TED Talks or something like that. Only problem with using other people's sound stuff is um, that can easily get into this copyright bullshit, which of course isn't bullshit. Sorry, I mean people should have their stuff protected. I wouldn't like if people started to, I mean, that they rip off the videos and have them at home and stuff and do that. It's okay, but if they started to put my videos out on their own channels, that would piss me off, you know, because that is theft. So, yeah, I shouldn't do that. It becomes quite woolly, and uh, that is strange. Um, I, but it's it's woolly in a, in a good way. Maybe it uh, has happened something with my painting. Maybe that is it. Maybe I have become better without noticing. I sure as hell have been struggling enough, and my. My brain now is actually getting better, so there's no doubt about that. Was that? Oh, it's exactly 10 minutes. Well, you see what I'm doing, so see you later. Okay, here we go again. Yeah, 
I'm not going to do any glaze now, it's not really necessary. Maybe a little bit, just in different places. Uh, it's quite... Just use a little bit. On the, sh the shadows. Let's just get it going. Not too much. I don't think I need any retouche on this either. So, just start to render it. <coughs> so, Funny, last time I was actually painting on it, it uh, had changed some shape and now it has kind of changed a little bit back again to the beginning and I'm getting more the same shadows and stuff so you never know what's going to happen okay Forgot how you were here. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's quite. It's not much happening in that onion actually, but around here, it's more. It's quite. Whatever. Uh, it's very round. Just try to drag that way. Find the right hue, right colors. And shadows. So we are. Suddenly there were no more no space on the card. And I need to change that. Here we are again. So I said I will try to drag things this way. Slow. It's a slow work.
here we have to adjust the onion a little bit. As I say, the model should make a bigger effort to look like it, uh, look like the painting, the opposite around. <laughs> um. Just trying to maybe focus and make everything count. So annoying when one does a lot of things without actually thinking. And you get into so many problems. And it's not worth it. Actually waiting for a transport, big painting. This one has decided to grow down here. I think I'm just going to stick to plan A instead of starting to change stuff now. It's always very tempting to do that, changing stuff, when, but also always leave to the never-ending story paintings drive me nuts in the end so. let's move this one to the right side
See, I'm working to get that green. Just putting things on top of it again and again. This one too. Small white and orange. Yes. There's some lumps there, they're all really annoying. That is what can happen. But then again, it can also serve a purpose. Okay. Check my phone because I'm waiting for this. Christian dude sending me messages about as a friend of mine he's a fundamentalist Christian and I'm a atheist and he's just sent me a strange message about that spiritual spirits can't be measured in brain by science. And I just tersely replied to him, well, 
If it can't be measured, you can't know if it can't be measured. Period. So, if you, it's ridiculous to say something like that. It's just, how do you know that it can't be measured? If it can't be measured, when everything else in the brain can be measured, there is a, apparently this brain surgeon or brain researcher or whatever that I think is a brain researcher that had this uh, acts now uh, this bacteria infection in his head and he was brain dead and he claims to be have been brain dead and went to heaven and blah 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 and for me as an atheist and a realist is called dreaming it's called being on a very strong trip of dopamine and all the neurotransmitters just before you wake up and they measured his brain and he was brain dead well if he was brain dead in seven days the brain would have rotted okay just because you can't really measure that much activity it's basically because his brain which had a had a virus in it rebooted it turned things off stopped producing maybe energy in the neurons because they didn't function when you had an infection and if it doesn't function, you don't have any activity. If you give people uh, anesthesia, you can't measure any brain activity. Well, not that I know of anyway. Maybe I'm wrong there, but well, that is a point with anesthesia. You, you just go all the way totally out. You don't dream when you're in an anesthesia. You don't have the brain activity. That one is turned off by the drugs. So are you brain dead when you're in an anesthesia just because you can't measure the brain signals? No. There's still metabolism, blood flow. Or you would be dead in actually a few minutes. Your brain would just fall apart. And, uh, such bullshit. And I, I, I know him quite, he's a very nice guy and I don't really understand why he had to start and start discussion with me when he knows so well that I don't believe in this shit. I never will. Because it's ridiculous. Sorry. If miracles happened, you can measure them. Or if miracles were a part of objective reality. That too, if you can't measure miracles, there are no miracles. And if you can measure the miracles, there aren't miracles anymore. People shouldn't take stories to be reality. I mean, some Ali, some Indian guy was allegedly levitating in front of a million people on his birthday, something, and the people were there, saw it just one problem the people that wasn't part of a group didn't see it the people who wasn't
conditioned to see it didn't see it. So what you can believe in or see is totally elastic compared to what you believe in. I mean the jihadists who are basically almost fighting to be the lucky ones to be able to drive that truck blow themselves up are rejoicing before they are going to die well some of them do some of them maybe doubt it a little bit and ask themselves what the hell did I get into but I mean Yeah. I mean, we used to believe in Odin and Thor, and the Vikings went into battle, hoping for a glorious death so they could drink beer or whatever in Valhalla. It was exactly as real to them as Jesus is to any Christian. And just that idea that people are usually believe in the things that they were brought up to believe in should make them pause. But they are so ingrained into their subjective feeling that it's impossible to um, to think, the thought that hey, maybe, just maybe, this is just a belief and that is not actually true. Maybe my feelings aren't real. Or they are, of course, the feelings are real. But what I feel, what I feel for, isn't real. It's like being in love. I have a very hard time believing that the other part is not in love with you. And why? Because your feelings are so intense. It is so real to you or me or whatever. I've been there, I've been in love. I know how it is to not being able to understand on an emotional level. I could understand on an Lucky me, I could understand it on an intellectual level. But it was like my reason was compromised. And uh, and you do like, oh, what if, uh, if she only, you know, if I... No, 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 it's never going to happen. It's gonna be 
used to be quite easy for me to paint that color. I don't know why it is hard for me now. Maybe it's the light in here that doesn't give me that same glow. I don't know. Hard to tell. Hmm. Here is more the orange specter, so it's a little bit easier. Think I feel that I need protein. After this, I'm gonna take and cook myself some lamb chops, broccoli, asparagus stuff. I'm gonna eat a lot of protein. They say that too much protein makes you age faster. That is sad because it stimulates your body to growth. But then again, do you want to live a life where you can't really, where you have no stamina, where you don't get strong because you want to live 10 years longer? Not really. I want to feel like a real warrior while I'm living and some wimp that can't get a hold. I'm made for eating meat. This has to be a little bit better. Oops, there they are. Wait. Stay up. Oogie doogie doogie. I'm going to go in with uh, probably some of the last brush strokes. I did put on some Katusha uh, Fannis and uh, I think I'm gonna do some uh, just some strategic glazing as I call it in the end. You know, you just put in some warmer colors, and, uh, put in some um, blue, French ultramarine. And the shadow, let the shadow glide into one another, and I can actually plan a little bit more how and where I'm going to enhance it. I want to work around here in the light areas. Uh, the rest looks relatively fine. Uh, 
I was throwing away a lot of time today on a little figure painting which I screwed up. So, you know, I had it and then I did a couple of brush strokes and poof, it was kind of gone. It's always very frustrating. Usually means that you have to have a have a few more overpaints, and that is of course time-consuming, especially now when I am at the end of the rope when it comes to time. So I'm going to finish these um, uh, still lives. So I actually feel I got something done. There's so little, there's such a little difference uh, between finished, when it comes to a certain point, finished and unfinished is um, very close together. Um, just have to strengthen some areas of it. Dragging that there. So this pencil I've lasted a very long time. Uh, yeah, it's unbelievable actually. I used it for. I use it now for months actually. Be very careful with it. Wash it. Okay. Has to be more yellowish, greenish. Uh, Cabling yellow and yellow. Okay, it's a cabling yellow um, dunker or something like that. They also have that ordinary cabling yellow, which is very yellow. So you can actually, and then I have cadmium yellow deep, as you see here, and uh, mix it with different blue. Actually, the blue I use the least is is uh, cobalt for some reason. Uh, it's almost like. Better in other areas. Now these leaves here, all of that. They have been one of them has actually become a greener. Uh, but I think it's better to stick to the start. Oh, instead of pulling up. Instead of putting a shadow behind there, just enhance this. I'm going to drag it out again. Okay. 
comes alive. You see now I'm mixing the colors basically on the canvas. I'm getting it up to, to the hue I want. And, you know, I am a colorist. I'm not really a classical painter in that. So it's kind of it's almost like I I have problems with deciding. Uh, you don't have to decide anything actually. But I I uh, am both both expressionist and I impressionist and and uh, yeah. I guess many people has gone to schools and learned how to paint and they are probably basically ordered to keep the neons if you go to a classical like Firenze or something and you study very classical art and you learn to keep down the nuances and hues and all that but and then you kind of lose a lot of the I think you lose some at least some of the uh, subjective person the personality aspect about it that you can't really um, so. I haven't gone to any schools like that, so I have just evolved my painting basically after art school in 1992. Um, I went to a drawing school. As I said before, I met a beautiful woman named Cecil Kobosta. And she showed me the world of, of, um, of color. And uh, I guess if it wasn't for her, I wonder if I ever would have evolved into a painter at all. But there was one year in this drawing, ordinary, just kind of, it was kind of a more illustration type of school where you should learn basics of illustration and drawing and stuff. It wasn't a, an art school in any real sense. But then I chose to go to art school instead of becoming a commercial more because that was my idea in the first place and um, because of her Cecil I went to art school instead of seeking into more in illustration line um, yeah. and become a painter but since 90, and I went two years to an art school until 1992. And since then, I've been painting myself. So, yeah. It's quite amazing, actually. Think about how life just evolves and as you can walk. Yeah. 
is probably alternative according to science there might be alternative realities where I have done totally different things I don't I think it sounds far-fetched to be frankly it's just theory and that's and reality is probably much simpler than that but and I can actually picture several types and times in my life where my life really seriously would have gone a different route if I chose this or that and funny so so I have uh, in art school I actually didn't I just learn basics, you know, and everything. But the teachers were hell-bent to make us into conceptualists. And they hated the fact that I already, already decided to become a figurative painter because I was a romantic and stuff. And still I am, actually, you know. I'm more of a realist now, but I'm a romantic when it comes to the painting and life and love and everything. So, as a girl I know, told me I was a romantic without trying to be one. And uh, yeah. And so goes for the art, or what I do is. It's kind of very intense, very personal. All these small brushstrokes here are extremely personal to me. It's hard to explain it because it's so, you know, it's just some onion again. But every time, every time, without any respite or anything uh, it is the same battle and it's so important to me to get it right it is such a challenge and it's strange that it's, you know, because you know these paintings aren't important in any objectives it's not creating new art or the only thing they do uh, is to um, add some hopefully some possibility no, some some positivity to the universe while I'm here. I don't remember who said it, but it was a guy who said you should be ashamed to die until you have uh, given something to humanity. And yeah, that's at least done something that will last a little bit. It's not that it's so important, but I think it's nice to know that other people actually get something out of this. And uh, they tell me. And uh, it's actually quite important that you tell me. Because it's very inspirational when people... It's inspirational when people become patrons or something like that give a thumbs up or just tell me 
it's very inspirational when you tell me that you actually get inspired and, and that you keep painting that I'm one of the reasons why some people I should have told me that they picked up painting again because of my videos and it's, it's uh, an honor to hear that that me this kid, this little boy from Kalmai in Norway actually can with his painting videos touch a person in Iraq or in It's amazing. Just knowing that should be kind of a good enough reason. You know, I am basically I have to I have to acknowledge that I am uh, it is a very selfish and personal process. So I'm not doing it to help. Uh, or I, maybe I do. I, I'm not sure. If is it a is it a cry for attention? Is it that I promote my art? I don't know. I know, just know that the feeling of giving is a great feeling. The gift relationship, as the same. And now I'm basically starting to uh, film every single thing I do in some form or another. And it is a very good way to document both my thinking and my process, my aging process, hopefully I will maybe live, hopefully I will live for another, I mean with modern medicine, with the involvement of, uh, they, they are evolving now medicines that can actually uh, uh, stop and reverse the aging process. And if that happens, Hopefully, and you will be, of course, healthy and um, productive. And if I could get another hundred years at some point, I mean, and if you can get another hundred years, you'll probably get another thousand because, you know, the involvement of new things within the time span of a hundred years or so twenty years extra is it's just extreme today. So hopefully I won't get cancer now and die because I would feel a little bit cheated. You know sooner or later you will go in an accident anyway but I mean if you live or as I saw if you have a hundred people and you turn off the aging process and you can't be killed by a disease uh, it will take you take a half hundred people it will take approximately 48,000 years for all of them to be killed in an accident 48,000 years, the first one goes after 7,000 years, just statistically. And 7,000 years is a hell of a lot of time. So, yeah. To think that I could do in 7,000 years. Anyway, sorry for the rant, just me thinking again. 
So if I were an artist, a young artist today, I want to say this, an older artist or whatever, and you are aging and you actually want to stay working as long as possible because the good thing about doing arts it's not the job it is who you are it is uh, it is basically everything and you can do this it doesn't really matter if it life your life will be a thousand more years or just one day but say that you because when the time has gone it is gone you know I mean I was 27 when I moved to Oslo in 1995 and here I am years later 51 and I have to say what the fuck happened <laughs> You know, yeah. So yeah, take care of your body, keep care of your mind, and hopefully we will get medicine so we can produce and learn new things for a very, very long time. But there is no, no good reason to fear death, actually, because sooner or later, no matter how long you live, if it is a hundred thousand years or hundred years, sooner or later something will kill you. That is just the second law of thermodynamics, sooner or later. It is your turn. And I hope I do it in the active. I hope I know that not some polar bear bites my head off or something. Well, that will probably be like in the active. It's not really an activity I want to experience for the last seconds of my life or last minutes or whatever. Uh, so. Prefer when I talk about dying in the active, I talk about the knowing that my days are numbered, that um, my cancer or something, or just old age that you know statistically I will be dead next year. <laughs> there is no fucking way I will live. No, no, no another year I mean with this medicine you have now anyway if you are a hundred years you probably will not become a hundred and one the probability for you to become a year older drops dramatically for every year, every year you actually live and that was also happening now so Anyway, that was a rant, but it was helpful. Actually, this this onion is quite nice. I feel um, I feel that I'm kind of getting in touch with it. I have no, I have pain. I think my most of my inflammation is gone, so my head is clearing up. That's great. You know, feels great. Okay, I've been working for a while and uh, I basically think I'm almost there. Uh, just have a little touch up. And I think I can say that it's done because I think it became quite nice actually. 
That's, um, has some subtlety to it. And, uh, actually, I think I, I've been struggling so much <coughs> lately, for the last year at least or two. And I guess it is my brain actually waking up again after all the pain, painkillers and stuff like that. And it's getting easier for me to solve the problem. There was a time I couldn't really solve the problems, but now it seems to come back to me. And it's a great experience actually. Um, so, painkillers are, aren't good for your neurotransmitters. So, what happens is that you pro go into this um, low dopamine thing. And, um, I mean, the, the painting is driven by the same as runner's high when you get into the flow. So you can think on how it is to run a one mile with <laughs> on the painkillers where you are drowsy and uh, you also have pain on top of that. So it's quite hard to focus, concentrate. But as I say now I start to feel that my brain is waking up again. And I hope I don't get any other stuff. I have some inflammation in my elbow, this one. But I will just think it's overtraining. So just have to slow down and let it heal. See this how 3D it is? It's almost like it's coming out of the painting. And that is what I love about painting. Creating this 3D thing. If you are on my YouTube channel, you probably see my video Why Digital Art Sucks. And I guess it's this thing in can't get that thing from digital painting or digital art because there is no real space, there is no, no reality, there is no substance to it. So, yeah. This is for people to play around with and do stuff to their phone photos and stuff like just play but don't call it painting please don't call it painting call it something else because painting is with paint So I try to keep it a little bit woolly all over actually. So I kind of think I'm a little bit done with it. It's almost like it's hard for me to believe because I've been struggling so much with the onions I've been painting. And this one went very smoothly actually. So, yeah, I'm going to let it dry until tomorrow and then I'm going to just to take it and sign it tomorrow. Maybe I'll just sign it now here. No, I'm going to sign it up there because it's too small. I'm going to sign it like here or maybe here. I'm not sure. Well, I can sign it now. <laughs> so it's done. 
Um, I can touch it up tomorrow a little bit if I feel like it. Mm -hmm. If I start going into things now, I'll probably start to evaluate a lot of stuff. So just keep it open. Some shadow underneath here. So I just want to put that on in. Some very small root out of it. Some small things here, and it would just be fun to have them. Yes, it's morning again. People are waking up, starting to make noise. Oh! To change his wheels, his wheels on this carts, charts of carts. They are driving people nuts because I can hear it down here, but people can hear it upstairs too in their apartments that are not over me. But that's a good thing about my studio. There's a store upstairs. Uh, he's a uh, from Pakistan, very nice guy. Came here in the seventies. Very nice guy. And um, he has open until he starts now, and he keeps the store open until basically eleven or twelve in the evening. <laughs> and then he go home, and then I usually do my painting. So I'm not disturbing him with my music or anything. That's a very good thing. Okay, so then I'm gonna put in a little signing, which I will do with. I'm just gonna write Co Avia, my initials, because if on um, small paintings like this, it will be too big. To use my whole name, I just want to write here, not here actually. Okay. Dot A. Dot V. And nineteen. <coughs> We'll do it a little bit starker. Okay. A. B. Nineteen. Okay. So. Also a little piece of thing I want to do here goes like this and a little bit here. here. Yeah. Hope you enjoy the process. Remember to give a thumbs up. It's very important for YouTube and for my channel growth. So, for the algorithm, every comment just 
write a comment, hey, thank you for the video, you know, whatever you write, even, hey, lousy video, you know, <laughs> I mean, all the comments, it's a comment, so, of course I like you to like the video, of course. So, just some paints, just for fun. Is this good? I think it's quite nice. Not bad. Remember, it can always get better. It is basically a never ending story. But I think I reached the end. So, I'm just going to link those together. Piece of white and orange. Oh, what the hell did I do now? That is what can happen. You just put in a little dot and then you're screwed. <laughs> so. It fucked it up actually. Hmm. Eh. Why, why? Maybe better. I need something right there. It was better before I started this um, so typical. Hmm. Uh -huh. You see, it's like conducting an orchestra. it gave it that 3d stuff again didn't it yeah okay I'm gonna show you the painting later with frame yay hope you enjoyed this uh, time-lapse video and here we can see the finished painting in reality basically or almost reality anyway so yeah, that's how it looks and as I talked about there's a lot of textures and 
3D effect here. It kind of comes out of the canvas. That's what I love doing actually when I build these paintings. And this is the onion I painted. Been falling apart a little bit. So yeah. Okay. Uh, hope you give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Tell me what to think. And check out my Patreon. There you can actually uh, donate a little bit or become a patron. For five dollars, you can actually get a painting like this. Win one every month, and um, you can also donate whatever you want if you like my channel and want to support it. So, until next time, stay cool, have fun. And okay, here you can see the finished artwork. And as I say, if you want to support my channel, please go to Patreon and sign up for $5 a month or whatever you like. And share on social media and then I'll see you in the next video. Stay cool and keep painting.